friends, Christy here from makingitinthemountains.com and today I'm going to show you how to make a really simple knit dishcloth. Alright guys, welcome back to my channel today. Thank you so, so much for joining me. Knitting is one of my favorite things to do, especially through the winter months. Not only do I get to make beautiful things for my home, but I especially love that I get to do it while kicking back and relaxing. I tell my friends all the time that it is the perfect excuse to catch up on some of my favorite shows. Now, I had such a great response to the last knitting tutorial I shared for the dishcloth here on my YouTube channel and on my blog that I could not resist showing you guys how to make another really simple knit dishcloth. Dishcloths are the perfect knitting project for beginners. They're a great way to learn and practice all sorts of different stitches. You can whip one up in just a couple of hours. And best of all, they're beautiful and useful, whether you put them to work in your own home or choose to give them away as a gift for someone else. Now, I know there are a ton of people out there that want to see a tutorial right from beginning to end, especially with a new skill that they haven't practiced before. So I wanted to make sure that this video walked you through right from the very first stitch to the last so that you could see how to make this dishcloth, whether you've been knitting for years or this is your very first project. I promise it is so, so simple to make and you are going to love the result. So friends, let's get started. Okay, so as with all knitting projects, the very first step is to cast on your stitches. You're going to start by tying a simple slip knot and sliding it over one of your knitting needles. Taking that knitting needle in your left hand, you can gather up the yarn in your right. I like to wrap it around my pinky finger once, which just helps me to keep a nice tight grip on it. Now, as you can see, I've got both ends of my slip knot wrapped around my pinky finger. This is simply because it saves me from having to weave in that loose end at the end of my project. Keeping the yarn in your right hand behind the knitting needle, you're going to take that empty knitting needle in your right hand and slide it into the loop on your left hand needle from the bottom through to the top. With your right hand, you'll wrap a loop of yarn counterclockwise around the top of your right hand needle and then pull that new loop through the old loop on your left hand needle and slide it on top of your left hand needle. You've now cast on two stitches with your slip knot being your first. Now you'll notice that that stitch I just cast on is actually two plies thick. That is simply because I've doubled up my yarn holding that extra end of my slip knot but I'm going to knit those two plies together as one stitch. This will just be for the first three or four stitches while that extra end of yarn gets woven into our project. With the yarn in behind the knitting needle of your right hand, you're going to take that right hand needle, slide it into the bottom of that new stitch that you just cast on on your left hand needle. Take the yarn and wrap it counterclockwise around the top of the right hand needle. Slide that new loop on your right hand needle through the loop on your left hand needle. And then picking it up from the bottom, you're going to slide it from your right hand needle onto your left hand needle. And now my friends, you've just cast on your third stitch. You're simply going to continue this very same process over and over until you've cast on 42 stitches. So slide your right hand needle into the bottom loop on your left pull it through 
and then drop it onto your left hand needle. And again, slide your right hand needle into the loop on your left, wind the yarn counterclockwise around, pull it through, and slide it onto your left hand needle. Now I've really slowed things down for the sake of this video so that you can really follow along with each step in the process, but once you get going you'll notice that things actually move pretty quickly. Okay, so once you've got 42 stitches cast onto your left hand knitting needle, it is time to start knitting your pattern. So we're going to start by knitting the first stitch. Okay, so gather up those stitches on your left hand needle. Wrap the extra string around the pinky finger in your right hand just to keep things extra tight. And make sure the needle in your right hand is in front of the length of yarn. Using the needle in your right hand, you're going to slide into the bottom of that top stitch on your left hand needle. Wrap the yarn around the top of that right hand needle counterclockwise. Pull that new loop of yarn through so that your right hand needle comes to the front. Then simply slide that first stitch off your left hand needle. Congratulations friends, you have just knit your very first stitch. Now our pattern tells us to purl the next two stitches, which is basically just knitting from a different direction. So you're going to take your length of yarn to the front of your right hand needle now. And instead of sliding into the bottom of the stitch on the left, you're going to slide in through the top. This time you're going to wrap the yarn clockwise around that right hand needle, slide it through, and then pull it off of your left hand needle. Okay, let's go through that one more time with our second purled stitch. So the yarn is in the front of your right hand needle. You slide your needle into the top of the stitch on your left hand needle. Wrap the yarn clockwise around your right hand needle and then pull that new loop through and slide it off of your left hand needle. Our next two stitches need to be knit again. So we're going to take our yarn to the back of our right hand needle again. Slide the right hand needle into the loop on your left hand needle through the bottom. Wrap the yarn counterclockwise around your right hand needle. Pull the new loop through and slide it off your left hand needle. Knit one more stitch with the same process and then switch your yarn over to the front to purl the next two stitches. The pattern for this row is to purl two, knit two, until you get to your last stitch. Now 
Now, I did just want to take a second to point out that once you get closer to the end of this row, you are going to start to notice that there are a few stitches that are double ply thickness. That's because we were weaving in our end there at the beginning when we were casting on. So you need to knit those two plies together as one stitch. As you can see here on my left hand needle, it is really easy to tell once you get to these stitches because the two plies come from the same place. So just continue on following your pattern, knitting those two plies as you would one. Once you've got all of your stitches from your left hand needle to your right hand needle, you're going to switch hands so the knitting is now on your left. And make sure to straighten out those stitches on the left hand needle before you start so that you don't accidentally double up a stitch. Okay, so for row two, our pattern tells us to purl the first stitch. So with your yarn out in front of your right hand needle, you're gonna slide the right hand needle into the top of the stitch on your left, wrap it around clockwise, then slide it onto your right hand needle. Make sure to keep all of your stitches fairly tight and then wrap that yarn back to the back of your right hand needle. The pattern for the rest of row two is to knit two, purl two, until you reach your last stitch. Continue to knit two, purl two, all the way down until you reach that last stitch. And then you're going to purl the very last stitch in the row. On to row three, where we're going to knit the first stitch, and then knit two, purl two, the rest of the way down until we get to that last stitch again. Like with all knit stitches, make sure the yarn is behind your knitting needle in the right hand and go ahead and knit your first stitch. Then carry on following the pattern of knitting two, purling two, all the way down the row until you get to that very last stitch, which you're going to knit. With the third row done, you're going to switch hands again with the knitting project on your left hand needle and the empty needle in your right. And this time you're going to purl the first stitch. So you need to bring that yarn to the front of your right hand needle and purl that first stitch. The pattern for this fourth row is to purl two, then knit two, all the way down this row until you get to that last stitch, which you're going to purl this time.
my friends, you have knit all four rows of the pattern that you're going to need to follow to make this entire dishcloth. So you're simply going to follow the pattern of those same four rows over and over until your piece measures about 10 inches square. Okay, so once you've got a square measuring about 10 inches by 10 inches, it is time to start the cast off process. Casting off is how you finish that very last row of your project. So you're going to wind the yarn around your right hand pinky finger just like you've been through all of your knitting. With the yarn in behind your right hand needle, you're going to knit this first stitch just like all of your other knit stitches, pulling it through and onto your right hand needle. Knit the second stitch just the same, pulling it through and onto your right hand needle again. But here's where we start to drop the stitches. You're going to use your left hand needle to pick up that bottom stitch on your right hand needle. Pull it up over top of the second stitch on your right hand needle and drop it right off of both needles. So you still have that second stitch that you knit but the first stitch is now pulled over and off. Then you're going to knit your next stitch on your left hand needle just as you would normally, pulling it through and off of your left hand needle and onto your right. Then with your left hand needle, grab that bottom stitch again, pull it over the top stitch and right off of both needles. Continue this process all the way down, knitting one stitch off of your left hand needle and onto your right like normal, but then pulling that bottom stitch over the new stitch on your right hand needle and off of both needles. This is how you decrease stitches until you get to the very end of your project. Okay, so once you get to the point where you have just one stitch left on your right hand needle, you can carefully pull it off of your right hand needle. I like to pull the loop a little larger so it's easier to work with. Go ahead and cut several inches down your yarn and pull it through that big loop until you've created a knot. Now, as you can see, we've got a big long end that we need to work into our piece. This is why we doubled things up at the beginning, so we only need to do this with our last bit of yarn and not both ends. So grabbing a large knitting needle, you're going to thread that 
loose yarn through your needle and then simply sew it through following the stitches as closely as you can down the side of your project. I like to work in a good five or so extra inches all down the side of my project. Then you can cut the extra yarn you've got left over. And that's it friends, you've knit yourself a beautiful little cloth. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video and that it's inspired you to try knitting your own dishcloth too. If you like this video, I would love for you to give it a thumbs up below and of course subscribe to my channel for even more farmhouse style DIY, decor and recipe ideas. Thank you so, so much for watching.